Hi, good afternoon or good evening, depending on where you're calling in from. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, this is the ICMC MCP Cyber Pathways, our training conversation part two. Um, today I will be, uh, well, first of all, I want to go over the International Consortium of Minority Cybersecurity Professionals mission statement, and that is to achieve the consistent representation of women and underrepresented minorities in the cybersecurity industry through programs designed to foster recruitment, inclusion, and retention. So um, our Cyber Pathways Career Growth, uh, this Today, we're going to talk about career growth and alternatives. Um, we just uh, wrapped up sort of phase one of a SANS program. There's also a Coursera program, um, and there's some other programs that we're going to be talking about, and we've invited some of the administrators of those programs here. And I think the message that we're trying to communicate to you today is that there are many roads to downtown San Francisco. Right, there are many pathways. There are many opportunities, um, and you should pick one and focus on it. And hey, you know what? If you take it that far, you should be able to pivot and take another path. And um, everything you do will build a strong cybersecurity foundation for you. So don't think that um, uh, anything's been a waste or a waste of time. Never give up. Keep on trying, and always look for new opportunities to continue learning. Right. So, um, uh, today's presentation is uh, from the ICMCP Bay Area Educational Team, that is Monique Head, um, and myself, Hakeem Aseni. Um, and why don't we get started? I'm going to stop presenting and let Jeff Berry from Security Innovations tell you about his program. We'll then hear from Olivia um, and uh, Annie Teshian from TechSF and JBS. Sorry, Olivia is going to talk about next gen and um, the Bay Area Community Colleges. Coursera, we have Andrew Engelbert and SANS, Maureen Shrewsbury. And then I'll be talking about Salesforce. So I'm going to pass the mic to Jeff. Perfect. Well, thank you. Let me um, pull that up really quick, the screen. Can you guys see my screen okay? Perfect. Uh, we're first off, uh, thank you for inviting us um, to this and uh, we're happy to participate. Um, just a quick little history about security innovation. If you haven't heard of us, the company's been around since 2002. So we've actually been around for quite some time. Um, the charter of the company is to help organizations ultimately improve their security posture. And we kind of do that in two ways. So first, uh, we have a professional services group that specializes in conducting uh, security assessments on, as you can see, kind of by the graphics there, we do cloud and web, we do mobile, IoT, and blockchain, um, and we do penetration testing, attack simulations, uh, security code reviews, cloud config reviews, all those types of things. The other half of our business, the other piece is we focus on education, so that's why we're here today. And again, we kind of do that in two different ways. Um, First off, we have a library of over 225 e-learning courses. So these are online courses that you can take, broken out by your different role, um, whatever technology you're working on or development language we are working on, um, et cetera. And then we also have uh, what we call as the command and control cyber ranges. Um, and if you're not familiar with cyber ranges, um, it's basically a platform for doing hands-on simulation of kind of real world applications or environments. So you can kind of learn and practice your skill sets kind of at the same time. Um, we have seven websites uh, within our cyber ranges, one mobile applications. We currently have one cloud environment, but we're about to release our second one. So that kind of gives you a little history of us. Oops, give me one second, it's not moving forward. Um, and so one of the things that I want to talk about today is uh, our boot camps. Um, so every month we do a 30 day boot camp, which combines the two educational products together. So the CVT courses and the command and control cyber ranges. Um, and so it's a 30 day program that kicks off with a cyber range is on kind of day one. Um, and then throughout the month, the 30 days, you basically get additional um, computer-based training courses, additional labs, 
and that types of things. And so that's kind of the layout that shows at the bottom of the screen. So week one would be live hacking. Week two would be um, uh, parameter tampering. Week three, SQL injection, whatever, cross-site scripting, et cetera. So every week you're basically getting little um, droplets of information sent to you. Oops. Am I still sharing? We see a fish. There's a cute picture of a fish and a kid. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> uh, let me just see what happened here. Oops. Okay. Are we back? <laughs> yeah, you're all good. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, so these are kind of the details of the boot camp, and the reason why this is relevant to all of you is that we're offering 100 free seats um, to the, this month's coming boot camp. Um, so again, the kind of the details of the boot camp. I already talked about some of this stuff, but ideally, again, it's a, a one day where you get four hours practicing the cyber range. Um, we use our Shred cyber range, which is an e-commerce platform. Um, that has an instructor that goes along with it for those four hours. There's learning labs, there's cheat sheets. So no matter what your skill set level is, it's, it's a fun, interactive environment for um, basically a safe sandbox for you to come and kind of play around and um, see what your security skill sets are. And again, there's other ways to, again, it's educational and then followed up by the weekly um, computer-based training courses. So there are a total of, I think it's like 30 courses that you get over the course of the month. Um, and then at the bottom, of course, it shows where to sign up. And I believe this was also sent out on the Slack channel. So um, you can also pick it up on there. And that's it for me. Jeff, thank you so much. Um, and just to everyone, if you have questions or further questions, please feel free to reach out in the Q&A or in the chat. Um, we will pick them up later. Next, I'm going to pass the mic to Olivia Hereford. Hi. Hello, everyone. I'm going to share my screen. I'm just going to be sharing some websites with you. I am I am with the Bay Area Community College Consortium, and uh, the work we do is around uh, career education and workforce development for the uh, 28 Bay Area uh, community colleges. And one of the things that I'm uh, uh, pretty much lead the charge on is our uh, Bay ICT partnership. And the whole intent of our partnership is to help the students in our programs uh, get exposure to uh, work-based learning, internships, apprenticeships, um, it, all of our education programs that are leading into high demand jobs. My focus area is in information and communications technology and with a personal passion around uh, cybersecurity. And one of the things I want to point out about the Bay Area uh, Community Colleges is that we have, uh, and I'm going to go here to our featured careers, um, cybersecurity being one of them. And if you go to this site, you'll see that there are over 16 colleges in the Bay Area. I'm sorry, I made that a little, I shrunk it, but offering um, cybersecurity curriculum courses, certificates, uh, AS degrees. And, a, and an interesting thing to note about our programs is uh, specifically community colleges across the board is a lot of our focus is on hands-on practical knowledge. We find that a lot of the students in our programs already have bachelor's degrees and they're coming back to uh, prepare for industry certifications or upskill in their current jobs. And so I want to just really, I wanted to start out here pointing out that the, the Bay Area Community Colleges uh, provide a plethora of opportunities for cybersecurity education. Now, again, one of the things that is important with our, um, for our, I'm going to go to news here and show you some, some, so some of the things that we get involved in. Um, uh, is providing exposure to opportunities, not only for learning, but for work, 
for actually work-based learning. And one of the things that we've been doing uh, all uh, since fall of last year is uh, tech talks. And I would say 75% of those tech talks have been in the area of cybersecurity. These are uh, professionals, CISOs coming in and, and talking about their role, what they're looking for as far as people that they're hiring. But one of the key partnerships that we've recently formed with uh, form is with next gen cyber talent. And here you're seeing that we're uh, advertising, promoting one of their training courses uh, coming up soon. And this has been a great partnership because what next gen uh, in partnership with the community colleges, what they're recognizing is with their focus on diversity, with their focus on inclusion, they know that to go to where the diversity is. And the diversity is in our community colleges, particularly here in the Bay Area. And they also know that our students, particularly those that are don't already have degrees, one of the key things that they need after they get their, complete their courses and their, and their certificates is, is experience. And so one of the things that uh, great programs that NextGen Cyber Talent has is one in which they, uh, partner with our our our, co our colleges and our cybersecurity programs, and offer students the opportunity for additional training in SIM tools and other um, uh, software that will help them uh, get placed. And again, next gen cy uh, cyber talent has a program that will uh, train up community college cybersecurity students. In, in SIM tools and other software, and then place them in paid internships. And depending upon the training and skills the, 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 the student may already have, even entry level uh, positions, and which has already occurred uh, several times. So they're, if you're interested in these programs, and it's, they're, they're not just for, I, I wanna point out that the next gen programs are not just for community college students and for anybody that's interested in taking this training and um, uh, getting into uh, internships. But if you're interested, come to this, 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 this website uh, and go to the students page. You scroll down here, obviously they're recognizing, you know, pointing out again to the students that we do have a, a talent gap and we're looking to fill that gap. But if you scroll all the way down, Here's an opportunity to apply. And what this does is this, if you apply uh, to this program, you are now uh, uh, have a, several opportunities here, not only for additional learning, but also for, um, uh, they're also offering connections with mentors. Uh, they do, um, regular some weekly check-ins with all of the folk that are in the program that provide um, support such as around um, um, resume building, um, uh, interviewing, uh, just preparing you for breaking into the industry. So these right now are the, the uh, courses that they're offering, um, Palo Alto Cybersecurity Foundational courses, and then the one that's just that they just opened up last week, uh, Privacy 101. And uh, again, uh, if you're interested, come to this site and register. This gets you into their database uh, and you'll continue to learn about the opportunities. Uh, this is also a good place for those of you that would like to be mentors. This is where we go as well. But anyway, right now we're focused on, on focusing on student education. So, um, NextGen has been great to work with. And as I said, they're one of our uh, Bay ICT partners and we promote a lot of the work that they do here on our site. And uh, there's, I gotta tell you, there's some really cool stuff coming up that they're planning. So please, if you're interested in uh, getting involved with NextGen programs, go to that student site and um, get signed up. Thank you. Thank you so much, Olivia. And you actually uh, mentioned a couple of things that resonate with me. And that is like, you know, you can also tune into podcasts and 
and sort of make cybersecurity education part of your day to day, right? You can listen to music or you can listen to half an hour, like Semantic has a pod, Mandiant has a pod, there's so many podcasts. And it's just gonna fill you with the vocabulary, the current news, the solutions. It's gonna make you that much more confident when you're having a conversation, perhaps in front of an employer on what to do um, next and your next career move. Okay, I'm going to pass the mic to Annie Teshian from Tech SF and Jewish Vocational Services. Thank you so much, Hakeem. I'll listen to any podcast you recommend. Um, and thank you, I, Olivia. I learned a lot about that program. So um, we're talking about alternative training programs, um, how to be connected, how to build your network in the space. JVS offers a number of programs. So I'm going to quickly go through uh, a little presentation deck that I'm happy to uh, make available after. Um, so JVS, San Francisco, we're helping people build in-demand job skills, make connections, most importantly here, and build a career in the Bay Area. Thank you so much again, Hakeem, um, for including us today. Um, we've been built for this. We've been through five recessions. Um, we've helped, you know, numerous people this year stay connected and upskill and reskill and, and find jobs even during this very unusual, uh, difficult year. Um, we find, and this number might be higher according to some people, 50% uh, of jobs are coming through your personal and professional networks. So Hakeem and the team here have created a really amazing one. And, and I'm really glad to be part of that today. And our secret sauce has to do with us looking for labor market analysis, what jobs are in demand, um, training in specific skills, offering ongoing job search mentorship as part of each of our programs. We boast over 300 plus employer connections. And then we, um, as Olivia was saying, most importantly, help people get on the job training opportunities to boost your credibility uh, in the industry. We are offering services at all stages of the job search. So if you just wanna test us out, go for a ride, sign up for one of our job search workshops and I'll include these links uh, in the chat. Um, these are just free workshops that we offer to the community and some of our participants have actually then learned about another program, which I'll talk about uh, at JVS through these uh, and have also just found community and, and actually been networking with people uh, in these workshops and in, in the Zoom chat. Um, for people who you know have a target job in mind, so maybe you've already decided on cyber, you've done all your training. Um, we have a two-week job search boot camp, and we work with people for six months after that to help them find their target job. We offer ongoing support in a cohort environment, uh, all virtual now. JVS used to be meeting in person downtown, and so until we can do that again, um, we are happy to offer all of our services online. Um, we train in healthcare, we train in technology, we train in skilled trades. I'm representing the technology department at JVS, so I'm going to be talking about those programs, but feel free to reach out if you have any loved ones or family members who are wanting to look into other areas that we train in. Um, so for our technology programs, as Haki mentioned, we're doing uh, in the invite, we're doing uh, a program in data analytics in partnership with Springboard. Uh, we have a Salesforce admin and certificate program. Uh, we train in bookkeeping um, with a certificate and a paid internship supporting a small business and, and learning books, bookkeeping skills. Um, and then our latest program, which we'll be launching this summer is an IT futures program, running people through the Google IT help desk training uh, and uh, offering a paid internship and ongoing support through a cohort. Uh, just a glimpse here at dates. We are launching our bookkeeping refresher and our bookkeeping basics uh, program for those who might be interested or family members who might be wanting to break into this career this summer, July. Data analytics course will launch another of those cohorts in fall. Uh, IT help desk um, we're really targeting people with no experience. So um, people on this call might have a little bit more experience, but if you wanna join this cohort and, and you know, review the basics and get experience, please feel free to apply. And then our Salesforce admin program uh, also launching in uh, August. Um, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop there and I'm going to just, uh, 
try to escape. Yep. And I'm going to go to show, uh, sorry, just moving my, there we go. Um, I want to bring everyone's attention to our tech SF page. So this is the JVS site. So if you go to skills training and go to the uh, tech Sec page. If you click on Tech SF here, this is what I'd really like for everyone to, as their action item, if you're interested in learning more, we host a orientation every Friday at 11 a.m. So you simply just click this learn more button. You're taken to a little interest form here. Get in the fold. Um, come to that orientation because what we'll be talking about is not only JVS programs, but of other programs, free training programs in the area. And I've been able to just learn more from this call today. So to make sure that we're including the activities that Olivia and Jerry talked about. Um, so we have programs uh, in, with other fellow workforce training providers like uh, Code Tenderloin, Mission Bit, Dev Mission, BayVac, to name a few. So um, please make that your action item. And uh, I think that's it for me. So thank you so much. Annie, thank you so much. Um, and, you know, I, again, things that resonate with me, I did my PMP training through BayVac. I did my Salesforce training through JBS. Um, I met a lot of people, great cohorts. I met you, Annie. I give back to the community and the Bay Area and strongly encourage everyone. And, you know, even if whatever it is you're going through, if you need child care, if you need more time to take the exam, if you need a second opportunity to take the exam, reach out to your coordinators of people on this call and just ask. There's always funds available. If you knock, the door will be open. I'm too, I don't mean to get spiritual, but hallelujah. All right, so I'm gonna move on, pass the mic to Andrew Engelbert. Um, Andrew, your name does say Hakeem, but I know you're Andrew from Coursera. I'm gonna pass you the mic and um, let you speak about Coursera. Thank you. Perfect, thank you, Hakeem. I'd be honored to have your name, but uh, unfortunately I do go by Andrew. Um, so yeah, first of all, thank you for having me here today. I'm just gonna quickly share my slides um, just to give you a bit of a background about Coursera. Um, for those of you who don't know Coursera, Coursera is an on-demand learning platform. Um, we partner with some of the world's largest leading universities and institutions to provide you know, our mission, which is envisioning a world where anyone anywhere can transform their life by accessing the world's uh, best learning experience. Um, so what that sort of what that essentially means is we have you know we work with over seventy seven million learners globally um, and and part of that is also working with educators like universities and uh, and, uh, and industry partners so like for example Palo Alto Networks or Google Cloud um, to provide content to learners and to institutions um, uh, and essentially that's what we we're doing here today so we, we want to provide the content to um, to the ICMCP community. Uh, to really drive that sort of cyber cybersecurity upskilling, um, I'll, I'll pause there. I'll actually, uh, flip over to my to the actual uh, Coursera experience. Um, just a quick nod of the head there. Um, maybe I'll ask you, Olivia, because I can see. Can you see my screen? It looks. It should look like the um, the Coursera uh, portal. Yes, we, we see your screen. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So um, through the through the program. Um, with the help of um, Monique and and and, and Hakeem, we selected some some courses that to, to offer um, through through MCP, um, and these are sort of gravitated around specific institutions where the certification that you get or the the credentials that you'll get from from doing the online courses um, will sort of set you in that sort of pathway to to potentially get you know um, uh, either hired by that organisation or. Um, or, or someone who's looking to, to build that sort of skill set within their organization. I'm not necessarily saying you'll get hired automatically, but it's kind of the way to think about it, right? So Palo Alto Networks has, um, you know, they have customers who use the infrastructure of Palo Alto as well as Palo Alto, the company itself. Um, similarly, you've probably heard of Google Cloud. Um, Google Cloud is, you know, obviously uh, um, the, there's the actual um, cloud infrastructure that they, that they provide to a lot of institutions. Um, IBM, um, and then also we have Google Cloud Engineering and then um, for those of you who are sort of new to cybersecurity, um, we do provide some courses around introduction to cybersecurity by the university, uh, New York University. Um, so this is really uh, sort of providing a, a bit of a, uh, I guess, content to help you sort of gravitate if you're sort of new to, to cybersecurity. 
Um, and then on top of that, we've just got a couple of courses here to help with as you're working through, um, maybe you're interested in learning more about JavaScript uh, or, or writing a resume, for example. Um, so there's some guided projects which will help coach you through creating some content or like or learning about JavaScript. Um, so yeah, so really, as mentioned, just really excited that we, we have the opportunity to partner with, with Hakeem and Mene to, to provide this as a resource. Um, and uh, yeah, really, um, uh, Monique, if you're on the line, maybe you can just drop the link to request a license. Um, otherwise, I'll, I'll, I'll dig around and find it and, and drop it in the chat. But you know, more than happy to, to help answer any questions as well. Yes, I'll provide that link, no problem. Thank you. Andrew and Monique, thank you. And again, um, you know, many different pathways, many different programs. Um, as I said, I took advantage of two or three of them. Calendarize them out. Know what your availability is, one or two hours per week. Try not bite off more than you can chew, but just keep on chomping at the bit because everything you do is a brick in your cybersecurity wall. All right, I'm gonna pass the mic to Maureen Shrewsbury from SANS. We have just completed, well, she's gonna tell you all about it. Um, we have partnered, it has been a couple of years um, and I'm gonna pass you the mic, thank you. Thanks, Hakeem. We are thrilled to be working with ICMCP among one of your many wonderful partners, it seems here on the call, to be offering opportunities for SANS training in GX certification for cloud security and incident response and security analysts. We are thrilled with the program so far and how it started. And I also wanted to take the opportunity to share additional resources. Uh, all of these will be free because there should be no barriers to joining cybersecurity. We need all sorts of individuals with different backgrounds as Hakeem and ICMCP have been so great about sharing. Um, so I'm gonna focus on some of the free resources and I will include links in the chat box when I'm done. So for those of you that aren't familiar with SANS, we are a cybersecurity training provider and there's GIAC, which is the associated certi certifying body. The mission of this organization is to empower current and future cybersecurity practitioners, that's you, you're the future, with training, education, and certifications um, and the resources to create a safer global community. So we've been around since 1989 and we've trained over half a million cybersecurity practitioners. Um, we hope to include you as one of them in the future. And what I really wanted to make you aware of as you continue in your cybersecurity journey is exactly what Hakeem mentioned. You don't necessarily have to, if you don't have the time right now to devote to a boot camp or a specific training opportunity, you can immerse yourself in the world of cybersecurity and learn that lexicon and start networking so you understand what your next steps are. So SANS offers a variety of free resources to help you in that journey. Um, there are cybersecurity news and alerts. So we have blogs, newsletters, et cetera. Um, there's lots of free cybersecurity tools. I will put a word of caution here. Please be sure that you set up a, 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 a safe environment to do this. So get some VMware or some other free sandbox software so that you're not downloading things and playing around um, where you can destroy your PC, your Mac, whatever. Um, I speak from experience. So please be sure that you're careful there. Um, and then we also have a lot of scholarship, uh, scholarship and community programs, and then several other additional resources. So in addition to the wonderful academy that we have with ICMCP Bay Area, there is also a diversity academy that it runs nationally. And then SANS has localized uh, community programs in Maryland and Virginia. Um, there is a program in Canada. If we have any Canadians that hopped on this call, we are super excited to have you. There are free resources for you as well. Um, and then we also have Women's and Vet Success Academies. So I will provide the links to all of those. SANS also has an accredited um, bachelor's, master's, and certificate programs. Um, those do cost money, so I'm not going to focus on those today because I really want you to get your foot in the door and eat, sleep, live, and breathe this as much as you can. So some of the tools that we've provided, this is a brief overview. Um, these are downloadable, no cost. You can start to play around. This is in addition to several of the tools that are currently available. For example, Wireshark, TCP dump. This are just some additional things you can add to your toolbox to play around with on your home web. Um, we do also offer the Internet Storm Center. Uh, this is the SANS monitoring area for the internet. So we have a nice honeypot set up and we get to monitor what's going on on the World Wide Web. Today, as you can imagine, was a little bit busy with the internet going down for that good hour based on uh, the uh, availability issue with one of the cloud-based platforms. 
Um, and you can also check out a jobs board here um, that is free to apply to. Um, I talked about the Immersion Academies a little bit. This gives you the breakdown of women's uh, vet success, ICMCP diversity, um, and there's a couple more, so please do check out that website. And then I would be remiss if I didn't mention the podcasts, which I think are probably one of my favorite resources that SANS has done through GIAC, our certifying body. Um, imposter syndrome, that feeling that maybe you don't belong or everyone knows more than you is, is in every industry, but especially in cybersecurity, it tends to be, it tends to rear its ugly head. Um, so once you've done the training, it takes a big leap of faith to actually apply to some of these jobs we found, especially from my past experience. So I encourage you in your moments of doubt to take out a look at our podcasts. There are some really great stories from people who have transitioned from non-IT fields and have made the successful transition. One of which is Jose Barrientos who said, I spent 10 years thinking I couldn't do this and I wasted those 10 years. So please don't waste those 10 years please take advantage of the opportunities on this call and I will share these links. Um, and thank you for listening to my spiel and hopefully you'll have some questions and some resources available to you after today. Thanks, Akeem. Thanks, Maureen. Uh, thank you so much. And thank you to all the partners on the call. I'm just going to do the last uh, sort of um, uh, pitch for education and training resources from Salesforce, um, uh, JVS, Salesforce, and myself at my previous job, Wells Fargo, I know, I now work at Salesforce, um, had a chat and Salesforce does have a security trailheads where you can learn several different skills and several different trails with uh, related to cybersecurity. You could hear about various uh, roles in the past that people took to get into cybersecurity. Um, you can also watch uh, a video of the cybersecurity career chat we had um, with uh, Jewish Vocational Services and people from eBay, Capital One, um, and also some members of ICMCP. So I'm going to stop there. Um, these are a lot of resources. And again, I just strongly encourage everyone to never feel discouraged. Um, and if you do, just dive into a podcast, dive into a Slack channel, a Twitter, just immerse yourself in the verbiage and the knowledge that's always being shared in, in cybersecurity. Um, and let's do so. Actually, first, Monique, how are you doing? Do you have anything to add? I'm so sorry if I've been hogging the mic. I don't mean to be rude. <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, no, not really. I think you said it all. I just wanted to kind of add a little bit of, of inspiration for everyone that going through life and we have the an objective and a plan and a goal, sometimes there are hurdles and there are stumbling blocks. It is the character in which you pick yourself back up and keep going out there and working toward what you know your potential um, will, will lead you to and not letting the, the environment and the things around you, you know, stop you. It maybe can slow you down, but it should never stop you. And so that's why I want everyone to keep in mind, because as we offer these programs and whatnot, there's a different fit and a different mold for every person because we all learn differently and we all kind of um, respond differently. So just take a look at all the different programs and find the best one for you. And that's what I would say. And also with the Coursera program, just a quick note that the Palo Alto Network Learning Path, Palo Alto Networks has actually changed that particular course. So now it is actually broken up into individual courses rather than a learning path. They've actually improved it to include um, cloud security and some other very timely type topics having to do with um, you know, threat and vulnerability management. So just take a look. And if you have any questions, Hakeem or I will, will answer them. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to pop some questions off. I welcome everyone to jump in. Um, first one is from Zalias Raju. Are these opportunities only for those in the Bay Area? Are they in-person programs or are they also remote? Do you want me to jump in there a little bit or are you going to answer it? Um, well, so I'm not going to answer for everybody, but I think because of COVID, everything's remote. I'm just going to, in the order of appearance of my screen. So why don't you go first, Annie, then Olivia, then Maureen, then Andrew, then um, Jeffrey. 
Yeah, thank you. All of our services are delivered remotely. We do need to prioritize Bay Area residents, but that's not limited to San Francisco, so the nine county Bay Area um, due to our, our funding, but thank you. And uh, the for the Bay Area Community Colleges, obviously those those programs are uh, the, at least the, uh, the college programs are Bay Area. However, next gen right now is focusing is in startup mode, but they are looking at uh, folk in California for now, uh, but they do intend to expand. So I would encourage you, even if you're outside of California, to at least sign up at NextGen. And right now, as, as, as before, everything is remote for uh, NextGen, uh, and the California Community Colleges are starting to go hybrid this fall. Uh, for SANS programs, they are national programs unless otherwise noted. So the summits and all of that is completely virtual and free. So you can log on and start doing capture the flags, taking advantage of all of those resources now. And then our national academies and our local academies are very clearly marked. So please be sure to check them out. And, and Coursera is completely remote on demand uh, learning. So no need to do anything in person. Um, and then we're just offering to the to US um, uh, people who reside in the US. Yeah, and the uh, security innovation boot camps are remote. The cyber range is remote, and of course the computer based training is online. So great. Okay, the next question is from Michael Payne. What are your thoughts on people who are making a one hundred and eighty degree career transition from a professional career outside of the cybersecurity space into cybersecurity? We will answer in the same order. So that was Annie, Olivia, oh. Maureen, oh, and Andrew. <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, I mean, Hakeem, I'm thinking this, the Salesforce cybersecurity page is a great resource to start because they have so many uh, different trails and content on you know, non-technical career pathways um, in cyber um, as, a, as a point in. Um, but we're not, our, our current focus isn't on cyber, so I yield to the other panelists to answer this question better. Yeah, I think the Trailhead uh, site that Hakeem shared is a good place to start to get an idea as to what some of the pathways are. And, and I can say for the next gen, it might not be, uh, next gen is really looking for people with absolutely little experience. Uh, really just getting into uh, IT in general. Uh, and for, you know, at all of our community colleges, uh, there's always what we call a uh, exploratory or intro course to each pathway. And that would give you an idea as to how you can tailor, uh, you know, a program to maybe take advantage of what you're doing right now. Um, because a lot of times, a lot of the folks that are getting into cybersecurity are leveraging um, the, the areas from which they've come. Heck yes, you should go into cybersecurity. It is a phenomenal field. There are so many different roles and you don't have to necessarily be technical. There are legal advisors. There are people that work in marketing. There's a million different roles. And um, from the Cyber Talent Academies, personally, I can speak to having worked with several hundred individuals that transitioned. I apologize, we are in the era of COVID and so I have a little distraction on the side. Um, so we have individuals that have come from antiques dealers, pizza delivery drivers, salon stylists. If you have a passion, look at these resources and do it because we need you desperately. So do it. Yeah. I was gonna say, Maureen, I think someone hacked into your background. <laughs> I love it. Um, but no, yeah, so with Coursera, all the courses are the, were hand selected were cybersecurity specific courses to help uh, get you sort of focused on cybersecurity. So, I mean, I, I resonate exactly what all the other panelists have said like, it, cybersecurity is a high in demand um, job, but it's also super fascinating. It, it's, the, it's a broad spectrum of types of roles from like communications to like, you know, someone who's really you know, white, whitehead hacking, I believe it's called. So, white hat. So, yeah, enjoy. Um, it's fun. Yeah, um, I would say, uh, first off, I would, of course, take advantage of all of the um, free offerings that um, all of the people on this call basically are offering you. Um, so anything you can do to, of course, take, a, take advantage of that. 
Um, everybody already kind of alluded to, there's a lot of different roles uh, within cybersecurity. Um, there's also a, a major differentiation between IT security and application security. Um, so it's also something to think about, like, do you want to be in IT into networks or do you want to be more into the language, whatever development side? Um, if you're into the language development side, OWASP is a great organization to check out because um, they also offer a lot of free resources. Um, so it's also a great place. And again, just to kind of dip your toe in the water type thing. And Monique? I didn't think you were going to call on me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I expanded my screen. I was trying to look for the other questions. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm going to tack on to what um, Andrew said. I personally, I work in uh, cybersecurity as a security awareness manager. So I want to also call out this. A lot of these positions are very technical in nature of what you do, and that is a vast majority of part of cybersecurity and programming. But there are some peripheral type of positions that you can do in cybersecurity that doesn't call on you to code every day. So working in awareness, making people, uh, making sure people know how to secure themselves, working with governance and compliance, making sure that the security programs are adhering to um, compliance and regulatory type of uh, rules. All of these things also have to do with cybersecurity. So, you know, don't limit yourself. Take these courses, find out what you really like and know that you can kind of expand above and beyond you know, just the mere technical of a topic. There you go. Okay. Um, let's see. The next question is, you know, I'm currently a graduate student earning a master's in cybersecurity. Should I still consider these alternative pathways? And I'll go Annie, okay. Olivia, Maureen, Andrew, Jeff, and Monique. I'm so sorry. Hakim, can you repeat the question? So he says, I'm a current graduate student earning a master's um, in science and cybersecurity. Should I still consider these alternative pathways? I I would. I mean, I I, I don't know. I think it depends on what your university is offering in terms of job search placement and, and support, but I find that often, you know, the, the, the trainings here represented today are helping to find programs that connect you directly to employers and, and work-based learning. Um, that's my opinion. I would agree. I think most of the, most of these programs that we've talked about today uh, on some part of it are offer some opportunity to get, get work experience. Uh, but then also, uh, it's sometimes in some of the programs uh, at the master's level, um, uh, at least is what this woman, some of our students in the community colleges are telling us that that are have masters and bachelors, is that it's more theoretical than practical. So these programs might give you that practical experience that are, give you an edge when you're when you're finished and and, and getting out and looking for work. I would absolutely echo what Olivia has said. I think she's spot on. I think taking advantage of capture the flags, hack the box, not to mention all of the networking opportunities. I think it can't be understated how important that can be in your cybersecurity journey and finding a mentor. So I would absolutely encourage you to take advantage of every resource available to you, especially ones that focus on that hands-on technical aspect if that is your career goal. Yeah, the only other thing I would probably add here, um, I exactly echo everything else that the panelists have said, but um, you may actually find that some of the courses that, not just on Coursera, but the other, the other um, courses that you have, you may actually get credit for those. I'm not sure how your MBA is designed, but um, I know with Coursera, we do partner with a lot of universities. So the courses that you will take um, may actually provide some, some, some credit towards, uh, you know, your MBA. So, um, you know, it could actually come... It, this is a compliment as well as a, you know, an alternative, but um, yeah, all great resources. And yeah, of I'll, course, oh, sorry, Mike. Um, I'd say, that, of course, the dad in me says, uh, make sure you're doing well with your uh, degree and everything and focusing on that. <laughs> um, but assuming that's okay, uh, then I echo, of course, what everybody else has said, that 
Um, the more things you can expose yourself to, to me, the better, because um, you, you'll slowly uncover the things that you like and the things that you don't like within cybersecurity. And then from that information, be able to pick a career path. And I would agree with all the above. Um, and I think I'm just going to harp a little bit on what Jeff just said. You're going, you, if there's a person, you're a student, and you have a body of knowledge, and you have a direction you're going, also be careful that you don't overextend yourself. It's almost like being, right now, with all the different um, options available just right here, it's like being a kid in a candy store, and you want to eat all that candy, but you want to make sure, don't make yourself sick. Be strategic about where you spend your time and what you do. You don't want to overextend yourself and not be, uh, not master all the things that you apply yourself towards. So just think about it, choose carefully, but at the same time, you do wanna kind of sample the goodies or whatnot, like maybe get a little bag of Skittles and you try all the different flavors and you figure out which one you like instead, instead of getting a big bag and overloading yourself. So just be strategic and, you know, dip your toe in the water and work towards your, your dream or goal. And it will narrow and be more focused as you figure everything out. Um, I, and I agree with what everyone else has said. I'm just gonna um, uh, resonate on what Olivia said is, you know what, there is something, these programs are very tactical and hands-on. Sometimes universities are very theoretical. You do need a combination of both, right? Um, it's also good to always be learning, right? So ABL, just like continuous learning. And I can't overemphasize uh, what Maureen said, that network. You, you, the people you know, the people who know you, the people who have worked on your capture the flag team, the people who have been in your classes, the people who have been in your study groups, the people who you've asked questions to, they will know your passion, they will represent you, they will support you, they will back you up when somebody asks, you know, is this person serious? So don't um, underestimate that uh, networking. Okay, uh, another question. Does the SANS Women Academy accept uh, trans or non-binary people or any other women academy? Uh, I can speak to, I'll jump in for this since it's a SANS specific question. We have, right currently we accept people that identify as female. I have no, we, we have not further explored all of that. So right now that's the answer I can give you. Um, so if you identify as female, please apply. Thank you. And I think ICMCP follows that same guideline. It's as you self-identify, um, and, and, and that's it. Um, okay. Um, last, maybe can I just, uh, as, we, as we are wrapping up, I think that is the last questions. Um, but actually, let me just ask this question. I'm currently in Africa looking for a remote entry job in cybersecurity, and I have a CCNA and Security Plus, and I'm currently working on some Ranger force hands-on training. Um, any advice and where do I look? So this is an international question. Um, we'll go in the same order. Oh, I'll, I'll pass to, to uh, no. <laughs> I do, I, I, can, I can say that there, there have been um, a couple of students in the next gen program that are are international students are I, I they I can't say from where but they're 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 international students um, so I would you know just go for it I mean I think one of the things that Monique pointed out is that a lot of times we we accept these boundaries but you know you got to push it a little and see what happens so uh, I would say you know give next gen a, gen a try. Uh, and as you know, here in the, the, the uh, states here, if you're an international student, um, uh, costs can be high. So I, I'm not, I'm not going to recommend that. Let's stick with what's free and available to you. And I say, uh, go to that next gen site and just sign up and see what happens. That's, that's what you got to do. Maureen? Yep. Um, so we, I just, SANS has partnered with WeSees for another academy that just finished up and is about to start 
um, again at the end at the beginning of July, and we have had um, individuals from Africa actually participate and go through the training program there. I would say look at each individual's program requirements with things being remote, it makes it a lot easier. I think the challenge tends to be specifically the time difference. Um, speaking from experience working with some of those past students, that can be really tough when you're up really, really late and still working. So I would focus on the free resources that are not necessarily time zone dependent for now, um, but definitely keep an eye out and check out if you're female WECs, which is Women in Cybersecurity, which do accept international students. Andrew. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, so at the moment we're restricting access to, for, for the ICMCP to US. Um, Monique, I'll, I'll let you chime in if there's anything else I've missed there. Uh, yeah, we're just restricting to the US because we need to make sure that the information being shared is being shared in a thoughtful and strategic manner because you have to actually just think about it, this particular field cybersecurity, there's a lot of information and there's a lot of things going on. And I know you'll hear about it in your classes, whatever, nation states, so on and so forth. So for that reason, just for right now, for our launch, we're limiting it, but hopefully in time, we do want to spread and expand it because I think there are other people in other countries that can really contribute to this particular field, um, just like any other. But for this particular year, we're just going to limit it and see what happens. And Jeffrey. Um, yeah, Mo, you can skip me on this one, but um, <laughs> no, I think it's great to get the certifications because um, I know a lot of companies, that's what they're looking for is certifications. Um, I agree with Maureen, what she said is earlier I, I, about cyber ranges or um, trying to get some more hands-on experience. So it's not just all theory, um, but actual looking for a job. I've seen there's a couple of questions about that, like where to begin. I, I I'm sorry, but I don't have any advice on that beyond your regular job boards, et cetera. So I'll, I'll chime in here. You know, there are several other international cybersecurity nonprofit organizations. So one is ISSA, that's an in, uh, Information Security Systems Association. Um, uh, I know SANS does some international work, mostly in Asia. I don't know if they have anything currently in Africa, but there are other organizations. And um, I am almost positive the Google and Amazon have um, some free cybersecurity training for their products. So you might want to sort of just uh, knock around there, join some of these organizations and figure out how others have, one, gotten cybersecurity training relevant to that region, and two, gotten a foothold in the industry um, in that local region. Um, we are almost at time, and I want to be respectful of everyone's time. First of all, thank you so much. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you, Monique. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you, Annie. Um, and thank you, ICMCP Operations. Thank you so much for organizing this. Thank you, all the attendants. Please remember to reach out to each and every one of us. We are here for you. We do this on a volunteer basis. Um, we have been where you are. We are now here. Um, please each one bring one teach one if you know someone who's out there who could benefit from taking a cybersecurity class send them a link bring them to the party we are here we're having another chat next week so look at the websites we will send out a video of this recording please stay safe out there have a wonderful summer and again thank you so much for joining today thank you thank you thank you Oh, Thank sorry. you, everyone. There will be a survey link sent out to you. So don't forget to fill that in as well. And thank you so much. Have a great week.